Good morning to everybody. Thank you for being uh, uh, to my presentation. Uh, I would like, first of all, to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Stefanos Andreadis. I'm a researcher at the Institute of Plant Breeding and Genetic Resources in uh, Thermit, Saloniki. Uh, I'm an agricultural entomologist, and um, I'm working um, mainly I'm specialized in chemical ecology and insect plant microbes interactions. Uh, today I'm gonna give you a lecture about insect pests of uh, the medicinal and aromatic plants as well as uh, their management. Um, my presentation uh, will uh, focus on the greenhouse pests of uh, the medicinal and aromatic plants, on the field pests, uh, on the organic farming of the uh, medicinal and aromatic plants, and finally on the management, uh, focusing mainly on the chemical control. Oh. Uh, concerning the greenhouse pest of uh, the medicinal and aromatic plants, first of all, we have to state that pests that are uh, in abundance in the greenhouses uh, are also present in the field. Uh, moreover, uh, in the greenhouses, phytosanitary certification and seedling health are important for the establishment of a pest-free cultivation. Uh, therefore, the use of certified and pest-free seeds uh, is uh, crucial in order to minimize the pest infestation later uh, in the field. In the greenhouse, we have uh, several we can, uh, yeah, we, can, we have several pests like aphids, beetles, caterpillars, snails, and slugs, as well as nematodes. Um, most of them we will uh, see them uh, also in the field. Uh, therefore, I will uh, right now only focus on the snails and slugs because we don't want to have uh, the whole time uh, repetition. So, Snail and slugs uh, in the greenhouses uh, feed on the plant leaves of the young uh, plants and stems, uh, making irregular holes and cavities on uh, the leaves. Um, snails thrive through uh, thrive under humid conditions. In Greece, the most common species are the following four: two, uh, two slugs and two snails. Um, but yeah, farmers are aware of them. So I'm, we go now to the field pest. Here we have more, more species, definitely. Uh, we have aphids, we have leaf hoppers, we have several beetles, we have grasshoppers. We have uh, uh, caterpillars and cutworms. We have leaf miners. We have trips, spider mites, and of course also nematodes. So, starting with um, uh, with the aphids, uh, they belong to the Hemiptera. They are small, soft-bodied, uh, sap-sucking insects, which are infesting uh, mainly the underside of the leaf or uh, sometimes the um, fresh uh, stems causing on the leaves uh, uh, deformation and also aphids are um, important. Why? Because they are uh, they can vector also diseases. Um, aphids are present on bacil, as you uh, previously saw, but also on dill. Um, on dill, we can see them also on the stems, on young stems, as I mentioned previously. Here is a quite big colony uh, where you can see different life and uh, developmental stages from adults to young and older nymphs. Aphids are also present on oregano, on the underside of the leaf. Uh, 
Another hemiptera, a sub-sucking insect, is, uh, are the, the leaf hoppers, and especially the sag uh, leaf hopper, um, uh, which um, uh, is a common leaf hopper that feeds uh, on the leaves and cause uh, similar uh, damage, uh, like uh, thrips, uh, making white spots, which we will see here much better, which is on, on a mint plant where you can see these white spots, but also on oregano, we can see the, the symptoms of uh, the sag leaf hopper. Oops, yes, apart from the sag leaf hopper, sorry, uh, we have more other uh, leaf hoppers which are uh, belong uh, mainly uh, in the same uh, genus and making uh, similar uh, similar damages okay um, we also can find uh, on uh, on the medicinal and aromatic plants um, Lepidoptera species, caterpillars, which are chewing uh, on the leaves of the of the plants, um, young uh, larvae uh, feed on the larvae, uh, while mature larvae can make even uh, holes on the the leaves, as you can see here. Uh, which can uh, lead to extent to excessive uh, defoliation. Uh, sometimes um, uh, caterpillars can feed also on the stem of the uh, seedlings, um, uh, cutting cutting the stem and uh, destroying completely the the plant. Here we see also. Uh, another Lepidoptera species, which is our cutworms, which are festing the stems of young plants, cutting the, the seedlings, as we mentioned previously. It's quite common uh, pest. Um, going now to the beetles, we have um, a few beetles that are infesting um, um, the medicinal and aromatic plants. For example, here we have also we have uh, uh, basil, which is um, infested by a flea beetle, which makes, um, which feeds on the leaves and makes uh, small, and unique round holes. After, uh, yeah, it's feeding here, and then this uh, holes will, uh, sorry, this um, uh, this part of the leaf will become a, a hole later. Uh, we have also um, a few um, endemic, uh, let's say, um, uh, species. In Crete, for example, we have a Galeruca tanaketi, which is also uh, a beetle, like a chrysomelid uh, beetle, which feeds on oregano. It has been found that uh, if we don't take any uh, measure, uh, then it can uh, make, uh, lead to a severe damage up to 70%, mainly uh, on biologically uh, oregano cultivation. Um, another quite common species is uh, Frathora americana, previously uh, known as Chrysomelina americana. It is this here uh, very characteristic uh, beetle, uh, which uh, makes severe damage uh, on several plants, as uh, rosemary, lavender, sage, and thyme. Uh, here we see damage on rosemary, feeding on rosemary and uh, infesting the, the upper part of the plant. And here we can see the same species on a lavender, but also on a such leaf 
uh, making this uh, uh, f cutting the the leaves with uh, uh, chewing uh, mouth parts. <clears throat> so and um, after the beetles, we have the uh, the flies. Uh, leaf miners uh, of the genus uh, Liriomyza, which is also common to many uh, other plants, uh, are also seen on uh, basil, for example. They make uh, galleries and tunnels uh, within the leaf. Here you can see the insect, it's here. Uh, and as soon as a larva, as, and as soon as it is uh, going to uh, uh, get a pupa, uh, it makes so it makes a hole on the leaf, then the pupa falls down to the uh, soil where it uh, had uh, emerged to adult. We also have um, on the fields, uh, we have seen grasshoppers, uh, again on basil, uh, they can cause excessive damage, especially uh, when uh, we have large uh, population. If there is a low density, it's not a major issue. Uh, another kind of uh, insect that infests uh, uh, medicinal and aromatic plants are also thrips, uh, which are tiny uh, insects. Uh, again, uh, sub-sucking insects that uh, feed from the plant, from the leaves uh, especially, and uh, making, producing this life, uh, white, sorry, spots, which were, are similar to the spots that are making the leaf hoppers that we saw previously. And yeah, it's, yeah, sometimes it's difficult to distinguish these two different, uh, uh, damages from which pets uh, they uh, they come from. Here we can see the 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 thrips on the underside of the uh, of the leaf. Um, yeah. So apart from insects, we have also some spider mites that can feed on uh, oregano, for example, and producing, again, um, spots, chlorotic spots, uh, yellowish, uh, which later will become silverish. Um, and um, if the damage is extensive, then the leaves will soon start to darken and uh, well. And finally, um, it is worth to mention that um, medicinal and aromatic plants are quite often infested by uh, nematodes, roundworms. Uh, they're infesting the uh, root system of the plants and making this characteristic root notes, as you see here. This is uh, some roots of a dill, but can. Uh, you can find this also on such and many, many more other uh, uh, herbs like rosemary and thyme. Um, yeah. So now let's talk a little bit about organic farming of uh, medicinal and aromatic plants concerning the plant protection of those uh, of the organic farming of. Uh, the maps. So, first of all, let's uh, state why should we um, uh, follow? Not follow. But why should we uh, should we be concerned with organic farming uh, of maps? First of all, maps uh, are not concerned as an essential uh, diet for humans. So there is no need for uh, a huge quantity. Uh, for yeah, for for production. Um, secondly, um, as we know, uh, medicine and aromatic plants 
are used in the pharmaceutical and food industry for several purposes, as well as in the perfumery. So um, the quality uh, is, con is regarded, uh, yeah, it's considered uh, more than the quantity. And uh, third, organic cultivation, uh, as we know, greatly improves the quality of the produced essential, essential oils. Therefore, it is worth to, um, uh, yeah, to, to consider about organic farming. However, there are some uh, issues concerning the plant protection. Um, uh, plant protection aims uh, in the organic farming aims to manage the pests uh, by creating a balanced ecosystem in which the natural enemies, uh, the population of the natural enemies, referring to either predators or parasitoids, uh, could thrive. So farmers right now they are able to obtain such population, natural enemies population, from companies and uh, must release them in order to control uh, their uh, pests in their cultivation and uh, create this balanced ecosystem that we mentioned. Um, moreover, uh, farmers can use insect traps to monitor the pest population. For example, it's quite uh, common to use uh, yellow sticky traps in uh, greenhouses. Um, also, um, several, not several, a few microbial insecticides are certified, are approved for use uh, for biological control. Insect traps can also be used for uh, monitoring of new uh, invasive species. Uh, insect traps can be used also for the monitoring of the pest population in order to determine the time of action uh, that we have to take in, uh, in order not uh, to uh, uh, to cross over the economic injury level and the economic threshold. Uh, insect traps can be used for mass trapping, especially in greenhouses, uh, where we can uh, use uh, 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 a lot of uh, traps uh, to, to control a specific uh, uh, pest. And uh, maybe also in the future, insect traps can be used for uh, mating disruption. Right now, there is none uh, trap approved for mating disruption. Oh, sorry, mating disruption is not uh, approved for the medical and aromatic, uh, uh, medicinal and aromatic uh, plants. And also, against the nematodes, we can um, uh, we can uh, yeah uh, use some preventive measures for the control of the nematodes uh, by doing some soil analysis, uh, by using uh, non-infested fields that we know that they are non-infested, okay, uh, but also with um, uh, sanitations free of uh, residues of previous cultivations uh, and fields. Uh, this can uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, the, the development of uh, nematodes in uh, our uh, fields. So, and uh, my final uh, uh, part of my talk is the management. Um, according to the National Strategic Developmental Plan for the cultivation and uh, plant protection of uh, medicinal and aromatic plants in Greece, uh, which was 
uh, this was in 2017 when uh, this publication came out. Um, it is pointed for a, a sustainable agriculture, a chemical pesticide should be uh, avoided, uh, except when necessary. And when we will use chemical uh, pesticides, then um, we should use only approved uh, active substances in the minimum dose. We should not uh, use higher doses. Moreover, chemical pesticides should be applied in accordance with the maximum residue limits, the MRLs, as also known. And um, obviously, chemical pesticides should be uh, justified and clearly stated to uh, the buyers. Uh, applications uh, of um, chemical pesticides should be done only by certified applica applicators, uh, following the label instructions uh, of each product. Uh, application should be done prior to the harvest at uh, a time determined either by the, by the buyer or the manufacturer of the pesticide product, so based on the label. Uh, each aspect of the chemical uh, control program should ensure the markability of the product. We should not have issues with the markability. Oh, yes, you are here. Tile. The buyer should be provided also by a written report about the pesticide that was used, but also about the exact date that it was applied. This is stated on the National Strategic Developmental Plan. So, um, when talking uh, about management, we refer mainly to the chemical control. Chemical control is, okay, let's say necessary, but we have to be very careful. Very careful, why? Because quite often, insecticide resistance is developed. Therefore, application should be uh, applied um, according to the label instructions. Um, also, we should um, uh, change uh, uh, pesticides to alternate pesticides between insecticide groups with different modes of actions. And finally, we should minimize the applications and uh, uh, not uh, go for back-to-back -back treatments with the same active ingredient. Here you will see um, a table um, with um, active ingredients that are um, uh, registered uh, for chemical control, uh, but also for uh, biological control uh, in Greece. Uh, for example, as you will see, there are not so many. In fact, there are very few. And this is an issue uh, about the management of uh, pests uh, for medicinal and aromatic plants. Um, there are only three, six, eight. Uh, active ingredients, uh, which uh, two of them are uh, biological, that are registered, uh, can be used also for uh, organic, not organic, for biological uh, uh, cultivation. Uh, one of them is a physical product, and um, only one, two, three, oh, sorry, or five uh, active ingredients uh, are uh, um, registered. So we can see that there are quite few. Also, the registration targets for only a few of the species that we uh, previously mentioned. And uh, I have to say, to admit that 
the, sp the insect species that we previously mentioned there are only a few uh, of the uh, entire fauna that exists on medicinal and aromatic plants. Um, so, yeah, there is a, a lack on this uh, um, part of, uh, uh, of the management. Uh, and this lack is more obvious uh, um, because you will, uh, we will, we face an issue, for example, here in Greece, that, for example, for chamomile, that is a quite common uh, herb, there is right now no uh, active ingredient um, registered. The same thing also for crocus, a herb that is quite uh, common here in northern Greece. Uh, uh, it's, it's um, yeah, you can say valuable. Uh, yeah, and with that, I have finished with my presentation and I'm ready to take your questions and have a discussion uh, with you.